against Joseph Eckert. White blue control, excuse me, blue white control versus Avazan Reanimator. Davis at nine, Eckert at 21. We'll take a look at the board state, and it looks like Eckert is pretty far ahead at this point. A Doomwake Giant, a Corsair of Crewfix, not a lot of blossoms on his side of the table. For Davis, just a bunch of lands, though he does have a copy of a race in hand. Looks pretty good on this board. And this is the matchup that tripped up Jim Davis uh, when Rudy Briscoe was playing it, and a lot of it was what happened post-board, where Rudy got to cut a lot of creature removal for things like Thoughtseizes, Obzon Charms, and Missiles. So we'll see if any of those cards are, are factors for Joseph here, if he's able to draw them. It's a big attack here from the creatures for Eckert. Davis is reaching for mana. Looks like he has a copy of a race to cast to take care of the Doomweight Giant. So that'll be exiled. And it looks like Jim is going to take four. See, Eckert's hand, he does have a copy of Hornet Queen over there and a copy of Lana War Waste. Six mana, top card of the deck. We see that due to Corsair. It is actually another copy of Corsair of Crucifix. This is the kind of spot where it feels like, you know, Jim may be behind on the board, but one big draw or one big card drawing spell can overtake the game. Yeah, think, look at this board and think about how good and hostilities would be on it. Perhaps Faded Retribution, something of that sort. I think Jim's hand is just not particularly good. It looks like it's just removal and Elspeths, neither of which are really well suited for this board. Jim will take a draw, copy Divination, can maybe fix things up a little bit. Does have a Radiant Fountain over there as well. You do see the Elspeth in hand. The Divination, unfortunately, does not allow, he does not have enough mana to cast Divination and find end hostilities in the same turn. He's a mana short. He does have his big trump in hand, though. His one of copy of Fated Retribution is there, and he's got the necessary white mana to cast it. The question is, does he want to cast it right now or try to set up a bit of a trap? Well, if he plays Elspeth and pluses, he is not necessarily facing lethal next turn, but that seems extremely risky. And Jim is just going to pass the turn back. There's also the trade-off here as well of, well, do I cast Fate of Retribution now on my turn to get the Scry, or do I wait? Well, thoughts he's on top of the deck. That'll give Jim a little bit of information, because remember, Fate of Retribution can be cast as an instant. You get the benefit if you cast it as a sorcery. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jim says, you know what, I'm going to cast this on your upkeep to see what you draw with Corsair to get that information. Another factor here is he may want Joseph to move into combat so Whip of Erebos is not an out. If Jim just snaps off a Faded Retribution, Joseph can go eighth land, whip something back, and that can be really bad. Yeah. This way you lock out Whip of Erebos for mattering this turn. What Jim is really trying to do here now is clearly the scry is off the table of Faded Retribution. That's not going to happen anymore, but he is really hoping that somehow, some way, Joseph deploys something else to the table. Jim very, very patient. He might nab something else here. There is Whip of Erebos. And that's interesting because Joseph has a copy of Eidolon of Blossoms. And so Jim is probably thinking, well, maybe I have to respond with Fader Retribution here so you don't get to draw a card. Yeah, and it's not just any card, it's Thoughtseize. Joseph mm -hmm. really, it, Joseph's doing this because he wants Thoughtseize this turn. And that's the thing, if he wants Thoughtseize this turn, it may point to Joseph does not have a land already. If, if, you take, that, if you take a look at Joseph's graveyard, two thought seasons and two lands down there, so it doesn't look like there's anything to whip back. Yeah. Though Fate of Retribution, if he cast it and then Joseph plays a land, then he can whip back Hornet Queen or Eidolon or, or what have you. But at the end of the day, Fate of Retribution is going to come down. It's going to clear everything up. Whip will come into play. That's going to resolve, and Jim has already used an erase, so that's a concern. Thought on top of the deck. Corsair was the draw. Jim is trying to stabilize its seven life right now. Joseph's going to have to take some damage to play this Corsair again. Thought will be the top card of the deck. He'll play the land. And it'll be a passing of the turn, it looks like. Jim will draw. The, you know, at, at this point, for Jim, the coast is clear-ish. If he gets whip off the table, he's in great shape. Oh, absolutely. So he needs a card like a Banishing Light or an Erase right now. And he's got Divination to try to find it. He's also going to see what's in Joseph's graveyard to whip back, which, again, is not the scariest stuff in the world. Now, here's Divination. Two cards coming for Davis. Devouring Light among them. Not great finds. Radiant Fountain's going to come into play. He's going to go up to nine. And will not be playing Elspeth this turn, so just has to pass the turn back. Not the best Divination in the world. No, and his hand's now very soft to this Thoughtseize. 
Farika, God of Affliction, is the top card of the deck. That's got to be a little bit scary. Here's a thought to try to clear the way. Jim will drop his hand on the table. Devouring Light, Glare of Heresy, Elspeth, and then two islands. And I mean, this is a pretty, I feel like this is a pretty easy spot where you can take Elspeth and just use Whip of Erebos to bury Jim, given the way that it's set up right now. You can get back Hornet Queen this turn. You know, Jim wants to use Devouring Light on it. Fine. You can still get a bunch of tokens. You can present Lethal next turn. There's a Whip activation. I am interested to see what he wants to bring back. It's going to be the Eidolon. That'll allow him to draw Farika. Top card is Eidolon next turn. And he's going to have to let that Eidolon go to cast that. That's got to be a little bit of a win there. A little bit, but but Joseph wanted the, the Farika so badly that, you know, he's willing to, to make that concession. He gets to draw a card this turn. Also, he's going to be able to fulfill the devotion requirement. Oof, Bob's on charm. Draw that one. Now the top card is a copy of Temple of Silence. And Joseph have not even played a land yet this turn, so he gets to play the Temple, gain a life, take a look at the top card. That's the Temple of Silence. Make that the bottom card. So the draw next turn will be a Sansom Citadel. And this is what Abzan does. And this is what we saw when Jim lost to Rudy Briska. A lot of different angles. Yes. There's a lot of diversity in his angles of attack. And Jim just immediately put his island into play. I think at this point, he knows he's going to lose the game. Let's see if we can get some information on the way out the door. Yep. Also, since he put the island, slammed the island into play that he just drew, he may be trying to get Joseph to also speed up. Sure. Because time is an issue here. Yeah, about 17 minutes. Yep, and that's going to do it. And that's exactly what Jim's doing. He's getting the information from Corsair, let him play his lands, all that stuff, and move forward. Now, Jim's going to go out to the sideboard very quickly, as you can tell. And I think the big thing to notice here, and we've watched this when he played against Rudy, and we watch it in this particular game, he's boarding Glare of Heresy, it has not been very good. Yeah, and you can see he's going to last breath right now as he wants more ways to exile Corsair Crucifix and Isle of Blossoms. And I think the Glare of Heresies are getting cut right now. I mean, Jim's moving very, very fast. Well, he has to now. Tick tock goes the clock. Well, to, to your point about, I think he knows exactly what he wants to change about his construction right now. Sure. That glare has just been very, very unimpressive in the games that we have watched so far from Davis in this particular matchup. So he is definitely shifting some things around, moving scars in and out. He'll shuffle up for game number three. They should have about 15 minutes to play it in. Neither player wants to draw in this situation, of course. And if Davis wins this match, there's a potential for him to draw in the next round, depending on how the tiebreakers line up. So we'll see what does happen between these two players. But while we do wait, we will talk about the complete commander. Benny Smith's fantastic book about the commander format, now updated with 2014. Commander 2014. I imagine we'll have more updates as we go since Commander products every year. Yeah, it's a wonderful format that you get to kind of ramp up how casual to competitive you want to be, which you can't really say about most Magic formats. And Bay Smith's been uh, a staple of the format and an advocate for casual play for a very long time on Star City Games. This is the 2014 update. It's available on PDF form, starcitygames.com slash complete commander to order your copy today. Game number three here between Davis and Eckert. They got about 15 minutes probably to play it in for these guys. We'll see if they can find some opening hands that they like. But there's nothing short about these games. Both these decks are very comfortable going to the long game, and it's just a grindy matchup. On top of that, Joseph has Doomweight Giant, which can really slow down Jim's kill, even if he gets ahead on the board, as it has the ability to reset Elspeth tokens, which is Jim's most common path to victory. Boy, Temple of Lightning very quickly for Davis is how we're going to start it off. He liked his opening hand. Top card's going to become the bottom. We're going to go back Joseph's way. Joseph with the land over waste, pass the turn back. You see he does have a copy of Utter End in hand. Looks like a copy of Sylvan Carry added as well. Davis up to 21, thanks to Tranquil Cove. And we'll go over to Joseph. Draw a copy of Doomweight Giant. There's a Windswept Teeth as the land and pass the turn back. Tranquil Cove yet again here for Davis. He's up to 22. And there was no carry at it. It was actually a copy of Hornet Queen. Force is the draw. Force will be the play. Sacrifice to win slow teeth here. Well, Joseph, he's going to go down to 19. We'll see what he wants to put together for his third turn of the game. And Joseph's hand seems especially slow. I mean, not that this deck comes out like gangbusters in any case, but. And he's just going to pass the turn back. So setting up an Obzon charm, perhaps. And he does have one of those in his hand. Davis will play a flute of Delta. He'll pass the turn back here as Abzan Charm. Every time we've watched Jim play, he doesn't even consider fighting over this card. He just lets it go. Doesn't seem to care. Well, the whole reason to, to play this deck really is to pick the fights that you that you care about, you know? These Abzan decks only have so many cards that really matter, so let them draw the cards and fight over the, 
the cards of substance. Of course, our crew fix has been placed onto the stack. We'll see if Davis wants to counter this, if he does have a counter spell. He does sacrifice a delta to get an island out of his deck. You see Jim's hand here. There's a nullify, a dig through time, but he'll let the courser in. Courser will reveal a land and land will waste. Hornet Queen for the next turn. Now here's a copy of Last Breath. So that'll take care of that, even though Courser did get a little bit of value there. And Joseph is probably going to do a, a little bit of discarding at least. Mm -hmm. well, Hornet Queen can go to the bin, especially because he's going to draw one. Jim going to play a Flood of Strand, pass the turn back, working his way through a, a dig through time. Flood of Strand will get sacrificed here pretty quickly. Island is what Jim will search up. We'll see if Joseph has anything, anything he wants to play. Has a couple of lands now, so he's working his way towards the late game nicely, but he's got to get some more action going. Absolutely. I mean, Jim's de even if Joseph starts resolving powerful cards, it's going to be trivial for Jim to answer them, most likely if he's able to just chain into card drawing spells. And the pace of the game is really shaping up that that's going to happen. Farika. A card that doesn't have a huge impact on the game right now, but many turns down the road will. Yeah, it, it gives him some cushion against Jim's sweepers. And also combos with Idolana Blossoms if it shows up. I like keeping that off the table if you can. Yeah, it is an annoying card for Jim. I mean, we've we seen it, you know, when, when Rudy had it, it was very frustrating. And Frigga looked like it could have played a role last game if Jim wasn't already so far behind. There's an island and a passing of the turn there for Davis. We're going to go back Eckert's way. This is exactly how Davis wants the game to go. Courser. See Jim looking at his hand. He's got two lands and end hostilities and dig through time. Courser's in. Case of Coilos will be revealed and put into play. Forest the draw next turn. Let's see if Joseph has anything else to do this turn. Now you still have to feel like the game is being played on Jim's terms right now. Though Jim's hand is a little bit light on action. It's two lands, Elspeth and dig through time. So if this dig through time doesn't offer much, he can fall behind in the, the, the card count fight, but he's got a lot of looks at Chase's ingenuities, other dig through times, even divination. Just keep churning ahead. Joseph's hand, a couple of lands, and of course a land on top of the deck. Jim's gonna go with dig through time now. So take a look at the top seven. Take two with him. Imagine if he finds a card like Jace's Ingenuity, he'll take it. But he needs some card density. He needs more cards. That's what his deck needs right now. It's not about selection. It's about having a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to that end, he's found a Divination, which is uh, a good starting point. And Jace's, uh, Jim's deck, rather, is quite redundant in that regard. I mean, he's got Divination, Jace's Ingenuity, and Dig Through Time. So he's got a lot of looks, additional card drawing spells. And Hostilities and Elspeth there. Take a look at the top card. He's going to keep with the scry from Temple of Enlightenment, pass the turn back with Dissolve at the ready. The draw here is a forest. Top card of the deck is a copy of Siege Router here for Eckerd. I believe Dig Through Time was the card that Jim found on top of his deck there. Not a bad one to find. Here comes the courser. He was going to take a blow. Now it's a Hornet Queen. See how much he cares about this one. Does have a copy of End Hostilities in hand. Which I think Jim might have been playing for anyway here, so uh, because he has very little else to do, I think he just lets us resolve. He gets to play end hostilities with either dissolve, backup, or the ability to dig through time if Joseph doesn't do very much. Yeah, nullifying hand too. Yeah, this is just an easy spot to allow Joseph to resolve that Hornet Queen and then sweep it all up with end hostilities. And these are the sweet spots for Davis's deck. Is we've seen him do this so many times. Be it Elspeth with dissolve available, or the ability to cast that hostilities would dissolve available because now he has a choice of, okay, well, you got a siege right now. Do I want to counter that or, you know, I can just let the big four or five into play. Another thing that gets swallowed up by Elspeth minus power. Yep. Jim will untap. Time for him to draw. Copy of Faded Retribution. You see the blue cards in hand at this point. Dissolve and nullify. No dig through time just yet for him. Two Elspeths and hostilities and Faded Retribution. So an expensive hand. A lot of reactive spells, but can take a proactive approach if he'd like to with Elspeth. Or he can just sit on the heels because he's got the access to Fader Retribution at a moment's notice. He's going to use on hostilities right now. One for one trade. And offense of the draw. He wants to save those counter spells for something specific. 
There's an offensive. Right now, if you're Davis, you are looking for land number nine in a big way so you can play Elspeth with Dissolve back up. That's the trick. Now, there is a dig through time. And fortunately for Jim, he has some cushion. I mean, he doesn't have to rush right now. And picking no. up a card drawing spell is excellent. He can sit on his counter spells, his fate of retribution, he has access to it at instant speed, and he can dig through time if Joseph does not uh, tax the entirety of his mana. Yeah, I, think he, I think he likes the way this game is going. His life total is relatively high. He's at 11. He's got these lands that can gain life. He's got Elspeth to clear up any problems. And there's a Doomway Giant. And he's got to dig through time to find some stuff. Now, Fate of Retribution says, I'm going to clear all that away. I don't care about scrying. There's a Tranquil Cove. That'll come in. Davis is going to go up to 12. See if he wants to cast Elspeth. Not just yet. Won't do it without the Zolva. Yeah, absolutely, positively will not pull the trigger until he can protect Elspeth. There's Doomwake. See if Davis wants to go after that or not. Looks like he's got some interest in casting Dig Through Time. So he's going to take a look at the top seven, take two of the cards with him, see if he can find something like a Jace's Ingenuity. He does have five mana available to do something like that. He just wants a little bit more information here before deciding what he wants to do and leaves himself with enough mana to cast Dissolve and Nullify in the same turn. He found a copy of a race too. That's a nice, clean answer. You see Davis is picking up the pace now. He knows he's got to hurry, hurry, hurry. Dig through time, an option there as well. Looks like Jason Ingenuity is for certainly, for certain, excuse me, a card he's going to take. Because he doesn't have to answer the Doomwake right now necessarily, and he can use his five mana just to Jason's Ingenuity. Yeah. That's a good clean turn. That's exactly what he's going to do. Three cards coming. Last breath among them in a race as well. His hand is loaded. Stainful stroke two. The only thing he doesn't have is a land to play. And what's nice is that he has three copies of Elspeth at this point, but, so he can be pretty liberal. He doesn't even have to protect these. He can play Elspeth minus it. If Joseph has something like Hero's Downfall or, or Utter End, Jim doesn't even have to fight over it. He can just let that happen and deploy the next Elspeth. There's an erase. Yeah, he can use Elspeth in such a fashion now where make three tokens. Okay, my Elspeth gets started by Utter End. That's fine. Or he can just discard Elspeth, which he's happy to do. That's sure. how strong his hand is. Jim is such a big fan of leaving his shields up as much as he can. Well, he's in a position right now where he knows that he's closing the door on Joseph. He, he's not adding very many threats to the table. In the last couple of turns, Joseph's plays have been fairly anemic. It's Doomweight Giant on an empty board with no Constellation trigger occurring, no, no nothing. So you can tell he's running out. Now there's Wolf of Erebos, and Joseph's casting it directly in the graveyard because he knows there is no chance this is resolving. A man who is discarding Elspeth with the mana to cast it is probably sitting on some counter spells. Chances are. Chances are. Here's Elspeth. Three soldier tokens are coming to play. Elspeth's at five, of course. And Eckert is left with a answer to Elspeth in hand and utter end. But again, given Jim's hand, doesn't really care all that much. Now here's Claire of Heresy. That'll take care of that. And Jim, not even going to fight over it. There's Seder Wayfinder. That's good. Turn over a couple of cards. Temple of Silence will be taken with Joseph. Rest will go to the graveyard. Temple will come into play. Take a look at the top card. Becomes the bottom card. And we'll head back to Davis. Davis will quickly untap. About five minutes left to go here. He'll stack for three. Put Eckert down to 20. Elspeth's back. See if he wants to protect it this time. I mean, Jim might feel like his six tokens are good enough if he can counter Doomway Giant. It might be. The draw was Thoughtseize. Here's Utter End. Let's see if he wants to fight over this. Yeah, to me, this just doesn't, uh, this doesn't seem worth the effort. I think I'd be okay letting this go. You got my Elspeth. I've got six 1-1s. One There's Shader Wayfinder can trade with one of the 1-1s. One -ones. Save my counter spell for a Doomwake Giant. Because that's probably the only way that Eckert gets out of the situation, assuming he has more Doomwakes in his deck. Another cup, potentially concerning card is Hornet Queen. Yeah. I, I just want to sit on the counters. Joseph's deck can't really draw a card. So if he didn't have them before, he probably doesn't have them. You're putting him in a position where he has to draw a bunch of awesome cards in a row. There's a Thoughtseize. 
see Jim's hand, a couple copies of Banishing Light along with a Dissolve, a Disdainful Stroke, a Nullify. Can't take all the counter spells, that's for sure. So we'll see what Eckerd wants to take here in this situation. I feel like it just has to be Dissolve. Yeah, it's Jim's not going to be bunch. taxed for mana for the rest of the game. Davis quickly on taps, draws a card, copy of Temple of Light, and a little scry action. Top card becomes the bottom. He knows he's got to pick up the pace. Got about three minutes to win. Banishing Light's going to take care of this. Yep. There's a first for everything, I suppose. And why not Last Breath? He doesn't want Joseph to gain the life. He's trying to cut this game off. Now he's on 12, two-turn clock, facing down two counter spells. No, they're not hard counters, but they probably clean up most of Joseph's draws. Jim doesn't even untap the tokens. There's six more, push you down to six. Drew a copy of Nullify. There is no way out for Joseph Ecker. He's going to put his hand on the table and extend it. Jim Davis going to win this match here over Joseph Ecker. Two games to one, just in the nick of time. Blue White Control will take care of Obzon Reanimator, and Jim Davis still has a chance to top eight this thing. Yeah, we'll see if he's in a position to draw or if he has to win it in, but his top eight dream's still alive. That's how he wants those games to go, of course, and you can see. With Obzon, when they're not coming at you from multiple different angles, timely discard spells, Whoop of Erebos here, Farika there, Planeswalker here, big Siege Rhino there, doesn't go that great for them in that matchup. That's what happened in that third game. And there was no pressure.